Hey all you strawberry lovers out there, welcome back to the channel. I'm Gary, your somewhat friendly horticultural expert, here to help you to grow the juiciest, most delicious strawberries ever. Today we're diving into the top five strawberry diseases that can seriously affect your strawberry crop in terms of yield and quality. But don't worry, I've got some great tips on how to keep these pesky problems under control using both organic and conventional methods. So let's get started. First up we have gray mold, the most common disease that attacks strawberries. This is caused by a fungus, which is on the screen, and it's pretty much everywhere, ready to strike when the conditions are right. You'll notice brown or gray fuzzy mold growing on your strawberries. It starts as small water-soaked spots, and the disease can ruin your harvest before and after picking. To manage this disease, sprays should be started at bloom and continue applications every three to five days through harvest. Sprays are started at bloom because the infected flowers can pass the disease on to the fruit. Reapply if a rain event is a half inch or more. To combat gray mold organically, start by using potassium bicarbonate sprays like Cal Green or Millstop. Another great option is Monterey Complete Disease Control, which competes with the Botrytis fungus. If you prefer conventional methods, Cap 10 is most affordable and will provide fair to good control. Next, let's talk about powdery mildew. This disease shows up as white powdery patches on leaves, stems, and fruits, causing them to curl or turn reddish. Ideal conditions for infection are dry leaf surfaces, high relative humidity, and cool to warm air temperatures. Treatment should start just before the flowers bloom and continue through harvest. As with all of these chemicals, be sure to read the label directions to determine how many days before harvest you have to stop making applications. To prevent powdery mildew organically, Use sulfur products, like the ones I have on the screen, and also the potassium bicarbonates, which I mentioned before, like Cal Green, are also a good choice. They kill the fungus by desiccation, in other words, dries it out. Early treatment is essential for success. For conventional control, Immunox or Monterey Fungi Max, which are the same active ingredients, which is on the screen, are effective systemic fungicides. Although there's not much information concerning list of plants that are resistant to this disease, the varieties Monterey, Sweet Ann, San Andreas, which are all cultivars grown in California, have some resistance. Anthracnose is another nasty one caused by a fungus. It loves warm, humid weather and spreads with water splashes. You'll see dark, sunken lesions on the fruit stems and runners. For organic solutions, copper-based fungicides like copper hydroxide or copper oxychloride work well. But be careful, too much can lead to soil buildup. And one thing I wanted to say about these two, when I was searching online for um, these products, you can't find them in small quantities. So uh, I put on the screen some other copper products that you might want to try. Conventional choices include azoxystrobin, and I have some products on the screen, and Captan which can help manage this disease effectively. Our next disease is called leather rot, and it sounds bad, and it, it is. This disease can cause the fruit to turn brown, leathery, and have a sour taste. It's definitely not something I'd like. Focus on cultural practices first. Ensure good drainage, avoid water splashing. You could do that by putting down mulches, and rotate to other crops before replanting strawberries. You might want to wait three or four years. Organic options include biological amendments like Trichoderma species. Unfortunately, there aren't many effective organic fungicides for this. Conventional controls include fumigating before planting, but that's not practical if you're not a commercial grower. Too tedious and expensive. One source from Michigan State University suggested trying something called Agrifos. It's not labeled for use on strawberries for leather rot, but it is labeled for use on strawberries, so you can give it a try. Our last disease is called verticillium wilt. It's a soil-borne fungus that blocks water flow, causing plants to wilt and die. This one will really hit you hard. Cool, overcast days interspersed with warm, bright, sunny days are most conducive to the development of this disease, especially if the soil drainage is poor. Here, the focus is prevention. Use resistant varieties, improve soil drainage, and rotate crops. There are no direct organic fungicides, but soil amendments like trichoderma, I mentioned for leather rot, can help boost the soil health. I recommend you work it into the soil before establishing the planting. 
Conventional methods for control are the same as what I mentioned for leather rot, and that's fumigation. But again, uh, there's nothing available for homeowners to even do that, so most people wouldn't consider it. Some other helpful tips include select disease-resistant cultivars when buying your plants. Also buy certified disease-free plants. Don't dig them up from your neighbor's yard. Don't allow plants to get too crowded. Mulch between the rows with straw so that the fruit does not come into contact with the ground or grow them on landscape fabric. Avoid watering in the late evening. Wet leaves will encourage disease. And finally, keep weeds under control. And I have a video that will talk about that. So there you have it. The top five diseases that can impact your strawberry crop and plenty of ways to fight back. Remember, the key is to keep a close eye on your plants, act quickly, and use the right methods for your situation. I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more tips on growing the best strawberries ever. Keep those plants healthy and happy growing. This is Gary. Bye.